functions uh, we will learn in this lecture about functions functions some of their properties domain of the function range of the function uh, some kinds of functions like one to one on two bijective and so on we start by the basic definition of a function from a set uh, a to a set b we start with non-empty sets a and b and we will say f is a function from a to b and it is written this way and uh, we will say it is mapping or transformation from a to b or we will say f maps a into b what is the function is an assignment of exactly one element of b to each element of a one element of b to each element of a simply a function goes from assume this is the set a goes from the set a to another set b so we will say f maps a to b but what it says for every element here in a exactly let's call it small a exactly one element is assigned in here which we may call b and in such a case we will say f of a is b so this is what we mean when we say is an assignment of exactly one element of b to each element of a exactly one element of b to each element of a what does it what does that mean let me make another graph here and we will say this is a and this is b i want here to demonstrate a non function so if we have a here if a is sent by some rule to some element here and again a is sent to another element in here then we have no no function this is not a function not a function so a function is an assignment takes a from what we call a domain and it send it to exactly one element it does not send it to two elements if this happens then this is not a function that's what we mean by some by saying is an f f is an assignment of exactly one element from b to each element from a no two elements from b to one element in a you know exactly one element so this is a function and we will write this is f of a equals b or we will write ordered pairs or we write them in this way now it is uh, important here to keep saying that b is the image of a and we are talking under a specific function f and we will say that a is a pre-image we will use these terminologies a is a pre-image of b b is the image of a under f and a is the pre-image of b under f and here we go if we have a function f from a to b then this a here is called the domain of f and the range of f is the set of all images of elements of a the range is not b b might not be the range what we are saying here we will write range of f i will write it this way equals the elements that are that are from capital b such that why we are choosing some elements from b we will choose these elements that are images of some elements in a in the domain so this is the range okay so a function is going from a to b from let me okay a function is going from a to b so the elements in b some of them are images for for some elements from a 
So we will choose these ones as range of the function. Notice that some elements in B might not be images for some elements in A, then those ones will not be chosen as element in the range of F. Okay? Now here, B is called the codomain of F. So this is the codomain. I will write it here, codomain. What do we mean by the, co the codomain? Again, F is going from A to B. The range of B we have talked about, some elements from there. It might be all B. And it might not be all B. The range might not be ho the whole set B, okay? Now, the whole set B is called codomain. All the elements together. Whether some elements are images some from for some elements in A or not, the whole B will be called codomain. And you need to uh, remember that. To make things clear, let's take the following symbol uh, function. We assume that we have a function that assigned to every student assigned a letter grade. Ali takes A, Ahmed takes C, Yasser takes B, Hassan takes A, and Samir takes F. Okay? So the set of people here is the domain. Okay, and the set of letter grades, all of them, is the codomain. Notice that D is not in the range, but it everything is makes the codomain. Now, when we talk about the range, we will say the range is only all all the. We, we write uh, the range sometimes this way, assuming we have F. Consists of elements A, because A has uh, some pre-image. It has two pre-images, no problem. B has a pre-image, C, and F. So notice D is in the domain, codomain, sorry, D is in the codomain but it is not in the range of F. So this is a simple demonstration to make distinction between codomain and range. Okay, let's see another example where the function is given by a formula. Take the function F from integers to integers, which assigns the square of an integer to this integer, which means it takes an integer and assign as image for it is its square. That means f of x equals x square. So the domain of f is z. The codomain of f is z because simply f goes from z domain to z codomain. And what is the range? The range of f is so f of x equals x square. So it is either 0 square, 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, and so on. So it is 0 or 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square or negative 3 square is 9, 4 square or negative 4 square is 16, and so on. And it consists, uh, this is the set of perfect we call them perfect squares. The integers that comes out as squares of some other integers. So this is the range. Okay. Now in here we have yeah. a uh, go ahead. Uh, if and now uh, we will introduce what we call real valued functions. What are the real valued functions? It is if the codomain is the set of real numbers. So we will say if f has codomain set of real numbers, which means f is a function, it starts from anywhere, any set, any set. It might be integer, it might be people, anything, anything. 
but the output of f shall be real numbers real numbers okay then we will say this is the real valued function because the function the output of the function is a real value a real number and again if the codomain is the integers then we will say this is integer valued function so again in the second case the output of the function is an integer a value which is integer so we will say integer valued function okay now when we have uh, such a uh, uh, kind of function then we can add and multiply them so you have already seen that functions can be added together and multiplied together but you did not notice that you were doing such a thing whenever the functions you have were already real valued or integer valued so let's define these things the addition and multiplication so whenever we have uh, two functions f1 and f2 then we will define the addition and multiplication this way how I define f1 plus f2 how I apply that to x simply just apply x in f1 and then you get a real value apply it in f2 you get a real value add them and same things go for multiplication okay and this is very trivial we will not see uh, an example right away but we will need it later uh, here we define an image of a set this is uh, very important in general what it says assume we have a function that goes from a to b and this is f now assume we have a subset inside the domain and call it s okay now take all elements in that s and then apply them inside f substitute them inside f and take the images the resulting images so that will take us to a subset in the codomain or in the range because uh, this f of s belongs to the range and this is now f of s okay this is f of s so how i obtain it f of s simply the images of all elements that comes from s or we will say it is an element t such that there exists small s in the set capital s such that t equals f of s like it says here all elements t why t was there because there was a small s here that traveled to t t equals there exists s such that t equals f of s okay and simply now let's see this example a consists of a b c d e but here we want to see the image of the subset consisting of b c d only so we will take the image of b which is one here we go the image of uh, b and the image of c which is four here we go and then the image of d which is one again so okay so this is f of capital s so we can substitute the whole set inside f but be careful this is a notation this is a notation i mean uh, we are not substituting s as a set say f of x equals x square we will not take the s and say s square does not make sense but that means every little element from s we will take it and then we apply the square to it okay we substitute every element inside s we substitute it inside f and collect the images these images will be called f of s okay now we will study uh, properties of functions some kind of function that are one to one and on two and we will say that a function is one to one or injective they have the same meaning one to one or injective whenever the images of two elements 
are equal, then necessarily these two elements were the same element. Then we must have these to be the same element. Okay? Now, before I demonstrate, uh, demonstrate it in a graph, let's do the contrapositive here. Now, the contrapositive of this says A does not equal B gives f of a does not equal f of b and this is what we have already written in here okay now intuitively a one-to-one -one function does not allow say a function going from a to b it does not allow two different elements in a to go to the same image it does not allow that to happen okay that's how to say that we will see if it happens that two fun two elements from here have the same image here then necessarily these two elements were the same element they cannot be distinct now in red there means if a and b are not equal they are not supposed to travel under f to the same point so they are not equal their images shall not be equal this is what one to one means so let me make it in a graph in here for a demonstration of a function which is not one to one maybe we have a here and this is b and this takes the function here takes f and uh, b to the same element this is not injective not one to one so okay now in here we have it using quantifiers for every a and every b if their images are equal then these two elements are essentially the same ones and again here for every a and every b if the two elements are not equal then their images shall not be equal so this is the restatement of the definition but using quantifiers okay now how to show uh, a function is injective i give you a function and say show it is uh, injective prove or disprove we will say assume that uh, we have two elements x and y such that their images is the same they are equal and then we play with that till we reach that x and y were the same element actually so this is how to prove uh, it is one to one and how to prove it is not one to one is not injective it is enough to find two elements different in the domain such that their images is the same then it is not one to one it is not injective here we saying two elements are not equal but their images are equal okay let's see a simple uh, uh, example for one to one uh, this is a function defined from uh, the set of letters a b c d to these numbers one two three four five and the definition is given this way so apparently this is one to one no element here in the range no element in the range uh, has two pre images has two pre images so this is uh, indeed one to one notice here uh, two is not in the range okay what about f of x equals x square is it one to one function apparently you may say it is not this is uh, not a one to one function not injective I'll keep saying one to one add injective since we have two elements like negative two f of negative two is the same as f of two okay because this is four and this is four so it is not one to one so negative two and two goes to the same image okay what's about this function f of x equals x square x plus one x plus one now we will apply what we had just have seen how to prove to uh, how to prove a function is injective we will say suppose that we have two elements whose images are equal so f of x equals f of y but what is f of x f of x is x plus one and what is f of y is y plus one so simply take one from both sides and then we get x equals y this is symbol actually and uh, this is kind of function 
is one to one indeed because it is linear it keeps increasing decreasing all the time and think about that okay the and this is what uh, i just mentioned now the definition what is increasing i just said increasing we will define a function to be increasing or decreasing uh, okay a function whose domain and codomain are subset of real numbers so we cannot decide about that unless uh, the domain and codomain are real numbers so that we can compare between uh, the outputs so the function will be called increasing if whenever this happens so let me say it if we have x less than y then f of x less than f of y let me say it again in simple simpler words if we have two integers then the image of the smaller is smaller can I say that so the image of the smaller is less than the image of the bigger okay and less than or equal I did not say or equal now we will say strictly increasing if same thing happening but equality does not uh, the equality does not happening if x is less than y then f of x is less than y without possible equality and if you see here the quantifiers for every x for every y if x is less than y then f of x is less than y and in here for every x every y if x is less than y then f of x is less than or equal this is for increasing for decreasing the opposite thing goes the smaller element has a bigger image so whenever uh, it is called decreasing whenever f of x is greater than f of y where x is less than y so we will say for every x for uh, and every y with x is less than y then f of x is greater than or equal y and we will say strictly decreasing if same thing happening but without inequality if x is less than y then f of x is greater than y without uh, inequality so equality so uh, for every x for every y if x is greater than y then x is less than y then f of x is greater than y without equality then we say it is strictly decreasing okay so a function example for that f of x equal x square from the set of positive real numbers to positive real numbers is strictly uh, increasing uh, simply the graph of this function goes uh, this way we don't have the zero here so it is open so it goes this way you know it so this is x square so it is strictly increasing indeed that's because if x is less than y then for sure x square is less than y square and that means f of x is less than f of y okay good so uh, we have uh, a note here which says that a function that is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing must be one to one okay a function that keeps going uh, all the way if we have a function uh, increasing all the way then it is indeed one to one okay let me make it uh, uh, let me demonstrate that in another way uh, let me assume take a function which is not increasing and see why it is not one to one so uh, I will assume I have sub such a function here and now this function say it is uh, increasing at some point and then decreasing now what happened here if you notice here if we take some value on the y-axis and call it B then we will have two points and corresponding x coordinates a1 and a2 and then we got that b is the same image as 
the image of F1, uh, the image of A1, and the image of A2. So A1, A2 are not equal, but their images is, is equal. So the function is not one to one. So the function, if it increases and then decreases, then directly it is not one to one. Or if it is incre decreasing and then increasing, then directly it is not one to one. So, but if the function keeps going all the way increasing, then it is one to one. Or keeps going all the way decreasing, then indeed it is one to one. So this is one way to prove the function is one to one, to show that the function is increasing all the way, strictly, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. And you learned from calculus how to prove fun how functions uh, are increasing or decreasing using the first derivative, whenever the function is differentiable, whenever it is differentiable. Okay. Now uh, we have learned what a function means, uh, what an uh, injective function means. Now we will go to define uh, surjective. So a function from A to B is called onto or surjective function. If for every element in the codomain, there is an element in the domain such that f of A equals B. So let me say it again. If for every element B in the codomain, there is an element in the domain such that B equals f of A. If every element in the codomain has a pre-image from the domain. And so uh, that means for every Y, for every Y, there exists X such that Y equals f of X. This is the language of quantifier. And this is this demonstration here is an example of uh, a simple uh, unto function or surjective function. You see that this is the codomain and every element in here is engaged, has a pre-image, I will say engaged. It is, uh, it is not one to one because D goes to three and A goes to three. So F of A equals F of D, but A does not equal D. So it is not one to one, but it is on two, it is surjective. Okay, how to show the function is not surjective? Uh, simply uh, try to find an element in the codomain which does not have a pre image. And how to show an element, a function is uh, surjective? Just take an arbitrary element in the domain, arbitrary it means any element in the domain, and then you must find a y in the x in the, co in the, in the domain. Did I say domain? Again, let me say it. Take an arbitrary element y in the codomain and then find an element x in the domain such that y equals f of x. Okay? And how to show it is not surjective? Find an element in the codomain which does not have a pre image from the domain. Okay. And let's see. Uh, is f of x equals x square from the set of integers? Uh, uh, to the set of integers from this from z to z we are taking here f from z to z is that onto is that onto so simply you you will see that uh, um, for example negative one belongs to z belongs to to the codomain but there is no element x belong to z with f of x equals negative 1, right? Because there is no integer that you square and then you get to negative 1. So this is not surjective, not onto. What's about uh, this function? Again, from z to z, is it onto? How to prove a function is onto? We say, assume you have an element in the codomain. So again, this function here goes from Z to Z, and this is the good codomain. Take an arbitrary element in here, uh, then choose X equals Y minus one. And this is indeed X in here belongs to, to Z, right? Because Y belongs to Z then simply we will have f of x equals y. So 
f is surjective or it is one to one so for every element in the co-domain we found an element in the domain uh, that takes it as uh, an image or pre-image I, I think it mean to say okay now if the function is one to one and onto injective and surjective we will call it bijective so a function is bijective and it is called one-to-one -one correspondence or bijection here I want to use bijective not bijection one-to-one -one correspondence if it is both one-to-one -one and on two I shall write here and one-to-one -one and in two it is one-to-one -one correspondence that means for every for, take take the domain and take the codomain every element in the domain is related to one element in the codomain exactly and every element in the codomain is related to one element in the domain exactly one element so this is one-to-one -one correspondence elements here and here are related to each other one-to-one -one. so we will call it correspondence this corresponds to that and that corresponds to this so we will say it is bijective one example of that is the identity uh, function identity function it can be defined from any set to any set and this is i of e and just it takes x to itself and we will call it the identity function and we will need it okay good now uh, let's move to inverse and composition function what is the inverse function uh, a function goes from f to b the inverse will do the reverse thing will goes from b to f a function takes let me uh, write these things here so this is function f uh, takes a to b so f will take an element small a in here to its image here okay and f inverse will go the opposite way f inverse and it will take b to a okay so we will have f inverse of f of a which is a right because uh, this is f inverse what is f of a is b but what is f inverse of b is a now if we go the opposite way if we say f of f inverse of b because what goes inside b shall be inside f inverse shall be from the range that means f of a which gives back a so f f inverse sorry this is b f f inverse of some element gave me that element F inverse of f of some element gave me that element again so f f and sorry f and f inverse undo each other action okay and uh, this is what we mean by f inverse the inverse function and whenever f of a equals b then f of inverse of a of b is a and the function will be called invertible whenever it have an inverse but the question is when a function is invertible it is indeed invertible when it is one to one and in two a function is invertible if and only if it is one to one and in two if one of these two conditions is not satisfied then the function does not have an inverse then we say it is not invertible and we will say so a one to one correspondence remember that one to one correspondence mean injective and surjective one to one and two it's called invertible why because we can define inverse for it a function which is not invertible it must be not one to one correspondence which means it is not one to one and on two which means it is either not one to one or it is not on two so if a function is not one to one then it is not invertible or if it is not on two 
then it is not invertible. So having the function to be one to one but not on two, then it is not invertible. Or on two but not one to one, then it is not invertible again. So we ha need to have both uh, conditions. Now, uh, this simple example will demonstrate uh, this for us. Now, this function here is not one to one. You can, uh, is uh, sorry, not on two. You can see it. The number two here is not engaged. Now we cannot define an inverse of two. So if we want to send two back to some element here, where we send it, we, we have we have no bridge for it. We have we, we we have no bridge. So we cannot define inverse. We cannot define inverse for this function. Now this function is not one to one. Why? Let's see. Number two here has two pre images. So f so if we want to f define an inverse image for two then the question where shall we go to a or to b so we cannot define an inverse because it is not one to one this function is one to one and in two and then we can define an inverse so say for example we want to say f inverse of two where is two which number which is number is the pre-image which which element is the image of 2 is D so we will say F inverse of 2 is D F inverse of 1 is B F inverse of 4 is A and so on now this fun function is neither 1 to 1 nor in 2 why is not 1 1 to 1 2 has a uh, 2 image images this why this is why not 1 to 1 not on 2 because this 4 has no pre image this is not a function oh it is not a function why is it not a function let's see Let's see, why is not a function? Because sometimes it takes a to 2 and, and some other time it takes a to 4. So it is not defined. A function must assign for every element in the domain only one element in the range. And this is giving a two elements. So shall we decide f of a equal 2 or f of a equals 4? So this is confusing. So it's not a function because it is confusing, it's not well defined. Okay. Now, what do you think f of x from z to z is invertible, right? Why? Because it is one to one. So it is invertible, yes. And what's about f of x equal x square? It is not invertible because it is not one to one. It is not injective. And we have just uh, have seen that uh, one and the negative one. 2 or negative 2 goes to 4. Now, what if we restrict the function, the domain of the function, to be the set of non-negative real numbers? So in here, we are saying we want to consider this function to be going from uh, non-negative real numbers. That means uh, the real numbers, the positive ones, union, the 0 to the same set. Now, is that function is 1 to 1? And the answer is yes, because we are restricting the domain. Then this function is one to one and unto. That makes f is one to one and unto. And then that makes f invertible. And what is the inverse of f in this case? f inverse is of x is the square root of x so restricting the domain restricting the domain and uh, you have seen in calculus one that you defined inverse for sine of x but sine of x is not one to one how could we define the inverse for it we could do that after we restricted the domain of f of sine x to some interval where we guaranteed that f of x is what sine of x is one to one on that interval so we can restrict the domain. If a function is not one-to-one -one in all the domain, you can restrict the domain to some piece in there where you guarantee f is in one-to-one, -one and then you can define an inverse for the function upon that interval. Okay. Now, the composition of functions, if we have function uh, f going from a set, f going from a set a to b, and another function that starts from B where F ends. So F starts in A and ends in B. 
and G start in B and ends in some set C. Then we can travel, we can make a composition to go from A to B and then go from B to C. That means we apply uh, G first and then we take that and apply it to F. That will be the composition of uh, the function F and G. Notice that that means we apply G first and then we apply uh, F. An example of composition is the following f of x equals 2x plus 3 g of x equals 3x plus 2 so when we say f compose g of x that means f of g of x so we will substitute g of x inside f 3x plus 2 now what does f do to its x what comes between the parentheses of f shall be multiplied by 2 and then added to 3 so now what comes inside the parentheses of f is 3x plus 2 so you take that multiply it by 2 and then add to it 3 so here we go this takes the place of x inside the parentheses of f and we compute we get that again now what comes inside the parentheses of x the what comes inside the parentheses of g shall be multiplied by 3 and then added to 2 and now this f compose g compose f is g of f of x but this is f of x 2x plus 3 so 2x plus 3 will be substituted inside g and then we get that and then we compute we get this now notice these things are not equal so f compose g not necessarily equal to g compose f this operation is not uh, commutative okay and now let's see oops, sorry uh, this example f goes from Uh, real numbers to non-negative real numbers and this is the rule and uh, G starts from where F ends this is the codomain of F which is the same as the domain of G and then this is G of X and now simply uh, F compose G is F of G of X is that and then we get back X so we got uh, F of G of X is X which means G has undo what F did so this is actually the, uh, the definition of the inverse so we can say the inverse of uh, I, I don't want to say that because F is not uh, on 2 here I don't want to write F inverse unless if I restrict the domain here okay now uh, the consider that F inverse of F compose A you can see that I just I just talked about it okay now we move the la to the last part of this lecture where we shall consider uh, an important function which is called the floor and the ceiling function floor and ceiling function so what is the floor function it is denoted this way in, in case you don't see it clearly this is the, the uh, denoted this way called the floor function and what is it it is uh, the largest integers which is smaller than x the largest in integer which is less than x so if as if we assume x lives here and we have an integer n here and the consecutive integer n plus one so x is between two integers and then this will be this will be the floor of f this is the largest integer which is less than x now notice that uh, the floor function equals n why because n lives between n and n plus 1 it might not, it might equal n but is not allowed in here to equal n plus 1 because we are assuming uh, the floor is n if x equals n plus 1 then it is an integer then the floor of an integer is the integer itself 
because it says the greatest integer which is less than or equal x that means if I would want to take the floor integer of 5 it is 5 okay but the floor integer of 4.999 is 4 okay again f same thing for the ceiling the ceiling function is the smallest integer which is greater than or equal x so if x lives here and these are two consecutive integers n minus 1 and n then the ceiling is that and here we go x is less than or equal n but greater than without equality n minus 1 then the ceiling is n uh, in here I will say the ceiling of uh, of uh, 5.00001 is 6 okay okay now these are examples for the ceiling and uh, the floor function with the uh, with the, their graphs so the floor of one half is zero okay one half lives here and this is zero and this is one so the smallest integer which is less than or equal one half is zero the ceiling of one half is one okay what's about negative one half if negative one half in here then this is the integer that less than it and this is uh, zero so this will be the ceiling of negative one half and this is the floor so this is the floor and this is the ceiling and now same thing floor of 3.1 is 3 but ceiling of 3.1 is 4 right why this is 3 this is 4 and 3.1 lives here 3.1 so the floor is this integer and the ceiling is this integer okay now let me see more examples what is the floor of by the 3 what is the ceiling of pi 4 and think about the floor and the ceiling of uh, pi square or of e and so on and these are the graphs I will let you consider them uh, let's move to some other properties and very important the properties of ceiling and floor functions we have already uh, seen these uh, two ones and what's about uh, this property it says the floor of x is n the floor of x is n if and only if n is between x and x minus 1 for the floor function or the ceiling functions to understand how they behave you must demonstrate these things on the number line okay so let's do that for this part now let's demonstrate this here now it says we have some real number x okay and see what's happening and there must be an integer so when I say n then n is an integer now take one from x then indeed you will fly over n indeed because we are assuming this is happening okay so now see we got it n is less than or equal x but it is greater than x minus 1 good so the floor of x is n okay now we cannot allow x to reach n plus 1 they are not equal so n x is greater than n but not by more than one so when you take one you will fly over and fall behind or before n so you get something less than n to demonstrate that so I will leave it for you make some demonstration to understand them to understand floor and ceiling function you need it and and if you are computer science major then this function you will see this function a lot a lot of times okay now what's about demonstration for this one here what it says if I have some X here 
and then there will be some integer here which is the floor of x and the ceiling of x is here now this says if you take x minus 1 then you will fly over this integer and then x minus 1 shall be here and if you add 1 to x and then uh, I need this to be longer if you add 1 to x then you will find that you are flying over the ceiling of x so I got the following x is less than the floor the floor of x might be x itself the ceiling of x might be x itself but the ceiling must be less than x minus 1 okay now x is in, is in the middle say in in somewhere between its floor and its ceiling so taking one will make you fly over this adding one will make you fly over the ceiling so think about it okay what's about demonstration it's for uh, these ones so I will do it for uh, 3a and you do it for 3b now if I have zero in here and I have uh, x in here and then a negative x is here I, I believe uh, I need uh, more space so I will do it here here okay this is 0 say this is x and this is negative x and now assume we have the uh, ceiling function where is the ceiling the ceiling means uh, it is here so, so some integer so this is the ceiling of x okay now take the negative image take the negative image of the ceiling it is a mirror around the zero so this will be the negative image of the ceiling well this will comes to be the floor of negative x so we got the floor of negative x the floor of negative x is that integer which is the negative of the ceiling interesting huh so we got this proved okay now make a graph for that thing okay and what's about uh, this thing here if I have uh, if I add integer to some real number can I take that integer to uh, the outside of the ceiling of the floor notation like if I have X in here and uh, this is the floor of X here the floor of do I need uh, more space maybe so let me do it here I need more space see I have X somewhere and this is the floor of, or the floor of X okay and then add n to each one of them so assume when we add an integer n then we will find ourselves here okay and this is not uh, an integer maybe if x is not now add n to this we will have this is the floor plus n now what's happening here this is uh no no, no. Oh, cool. wow. I did, so i did uh wrong that this shall not be flying to the, there okay now add in to this will be here this is the floor plus n now what's happening this is integer this is integer and the floor of that is this so the floor of x plus n is the same as this integer oops okay okay and I will let you do demonstration for that this property is actually you need to uh, remember I get and you get used to it now uh, one last thing you might see uh, questions uh, asking to prove such a thing we want to prove that uh, take an X multiply it by 2 and then take the floor or take an X take the floor of it add one half and take the floor of the resulting in the two cases you will have uh, the same equality okay so we, we need to prove this equation okay 
now to do so we will write x as n plus epsilon okay now you need to consider such a thing uh, x is somewhere this is x somewhere so it has to be greater than some integer right and now the distance from here to here we are calling it epsilon and it is less than one greater than zero why i am assuming it is less than one because the integer n plus one is here now if x is somewhere bigger than n plus one i will rewrite it uh, as n plus one plus some other epsilon where epsilon is less than one okay now what's happening here uh, we will prove this quality for two cases when epsilon is less than zero uh, sorry less than one half and greater than one half what makes a difference if epsilon is less than one half then two times epsilon is less than one okay here we go uh, to where it is two times hey, here we go two times epsilon is less than one right so remember that what we want to do here we want to multiply x by two and then take the floor right now if epsilon is greater than one half then multiplying epsilon by two makes a difference than if it were less than one half so we have to split these two cases epsilon less than one half or epsilon is greater than one half and this is another reason if epsilon is greater than one half then epsilon plus one half is greater than one if it is less than one half then epsilon plus one half is less than one let's see now what's happening we will work with this part first and then we work with this part and show they are equal the idea here is not to move from one side of the equation to reach the other no for the ceiling functions if you want to prove equalities then you take that and move with it till you, till you reach some value and then you go to the other side and, and play with it to reach the same value and then the quality happens and this is what we are doing here so we started with 2x 2x is 2n plus 2 epsilon so what is the floor of 2n plus 2 epsilon 2 epsilon is less than 1 so 2n is integer and then you adding to it 2 epsilon which is less than 1 so you are not moving one more integer so this is 2n is an integer and then this is n you add an, and then this is 2n plus 1 the integer that comes after it if you add epsilon then you will not exceed you will be somewhere here you will not exceed uh, this this side so the smallest integer which is uh, the greatest integer which is smaller than or equal 2n uh, plus 2 epsilon which is this one is 2n so the floor of this function is 2n so we got it okay now what's happened to x plus one half x plus one half where is x this is x so divide it by one half we get uh, x okay where is x? x okay x is n plus epsilon so we will get n plus epsilon plus one half but epsilon plus one half is less than one so the ceiling of this is n so again here if this is x and i'm adding it uh, okay uh, adding x plus one half is uh, this is x and i'm adding uh, one half to it is the same as uh, adding epsilon uh, okay how, how I say that x plus one half equals that so the floor of this thing here okay good so let me demonstrate it somewhere I need to take this up so x equals n plus epsilon plus one half okay X, x, plus, uh, x plus one half sorry so this is in add to it one half plus epsilon we will not exceed n plus one why because we are saying here one half plus epsilon is less than one so the resulting here if you take this the floor of it then uh, you will go back to n and this is what we are saying here so now add the floor of x is n the floor of x plus one half is n again this is n and then their addition is 2n and then what we got 
this equals that they are equal but what th this thing is this is the floor of x plus the floor of x plus one half and this is this so they, they have in quality so we are done with the case where epsilon is less than one half now the case where epsilon is greater than one half but less than one again 2x equals 2n plus 2 epsilon so the ceiling is 2n plus 1 so we need to demonstrate that this is 2n integer but 2 epsilon is greater than 1 so when you add 2 epsilon to 2n you will fly over 2n plus 1 so we'll become here so the ceiling of the resulting thing is 2n plus 1 here it is okay now x plus 1 half is the same as n plus epsilon plus one half but now epsilon plus one half one half plus epsilon is greater than one so what's happening here if we have n here and add to it one half plus epsilon then you will fly over n plus one so the floor is n plus one and here we go now what we got here the floor of x is n now the floor of this is n plus 1 add them we get 2n plus 2 and now what we got here the floor of 2x and the floor of this and this are equal and then the theorem uh, the example is proved and uh, this is the end we finished